Hello everyone, I'm Will and today I'd like to take you through my grammar workshop for the past tense. In fact, I'll be doing three grammar workshops on the separate tenses. Today we'll start with the past tense, next time we'll do the present and we'll do the future tense at some point in the future. Let's get started here with the past tense today. So the past tense in English can be very simple to use, which is great, and simple to understand, but there are some more complex rules and uses of it that make it a very interesting part of the language. Today, we'll take a look at all the different forms of the past tense and how to use it naturally in everyday English. Let's go. To start us off, we're going to take a look at the simple past, nice and simple. The simple past is mainly used just to describe events in the past. Events in the past, nice and simple. It can be used for a single event, so just one event in the past, or a sequence of events, one, two, three, or just one, two, sequence of events in the past, but also for past actions, of habit, things we would do as a habit. Let's take a look at these one by one. Starting with a single event in the past. I visited Tokyo last week. Simple. It was one event, it happened in the past, and indeed we use the past tense of the verb to visit. I visited Tokyo last week. For a sequence of events, check this sentence out. He took the money, money and ran. One event, he took the money. The next sequence event, he ran. He took the money and ran. Again, our verbs are in the past tense. Take becomes took, run becomes ran. And we'll take a closer look in a moment at the different verb endings. For now, let's finish up by taking a look at using a sentence to describe past actions of habit. I visited them every day for a year. Visit becomes visited, and we can see every day for a year it shows us that it was a repeated action of habit. I read the paper every day. I visited them every day for a year. Another point though, when used with the past progressive, we will take a look at that. That's a different form of the past, the past progressive. We'll look at that a bit later, maybe in a moment. The simple past can interrupt an ongoing action. Ongoing action interrupted with the past progressive. So take a look at this. We were cooking dinner when the phone rang. So the past progressive here, were cooking, shows that that was an ongoing action. We were doing that. We were cooking dinner. What happened to interrupt it? Well, the phone rang. So it interrupts that ongoing action. Now, the phone rang is in the simple past. The verb to ring becomes rang, but we do use the past progressive were cooking to show that the action was ongoing. As I say, we'll look at the past progressive on the next slide, so don't worry too much about that. The next one, I was walking the dog. What happened? Well, I saw my friend. So I was walking the dog when I saw my friend. So seeing the friend interrupts walking the dog. There's a lot of other useful information on this page. Let's take a look at what we've got in the box on the left. So the simple form of the past tense is quite easy to use, but there are different little versions of it. For example, the basic simple past, I, you, we, they helped. The emphatic simple past for emphasis or emphasizing, I, you, he, they did help, using did, which is often used for emphasis. A question form, did I help, did they help, that's nice and straightforward. The negative, I, you, we, did not help or didn't, if you want to use the contraction, again, nice and simple. Lastly, a negative question, did I not help? Did they not help? Did you not see him yesterday? 
And again, you can use the contraction, didn't. The last bit of information I'd like to take a look at on this page, as I briefly mentioned earlier, has to do with the verb endings for the simple past tense. Regular verbs are nice and simple. They all end in ed. Walk becomes walked, I walked there. Help becomes helped, I helped him cross the road. Try becomes tried, I tried to do it. It's less simple when it comes to irregular verbs because they have various forms, like run becomes ran, I ran to catch her. See becomes saw, they saw me in the shopping mall yesterday. Be becomes was or were, I was there when he was there, or we were there yesterday. And verbs like take become took, he took me to the cinema to see a movie. So the regular verbs are nice and easy, just add ed on the end, but obviously we have to put a bit more effort into remembering the irregular verbs and which endings they take or which forms they take. So that's the simple past, and as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. So let's next of all take a look at the past progressive, which I did briefly mention on the previous slide. The past progressive, first of all, how do we form it? We take the past tense of the verb to be, so that's was or were, that's simple, and we put it with the present participle of the main verb. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Importantly, why do we use this? Well, it's used to refer to an action that was ongoing at the time being talked about. So we'll almost always refer to a time specifically or non-specifically. For example, uh, at 2 p.m. yesterday, I was walking the dog. So we've got our reference to the time, specific in this case, 2 p.m. yesterday. The verb to be in the past was, I was. And then the present participle of the verb to walk, walking, I was walking the dog at 2 p.m. yesterday. Below that, another example, three days ago, we were staying with my uncle. So there's our time reference, it was three days ago. The past tense of the verb to be, in this case, we were. And then the present participle of the verb to stay, staying. So we were staying with my uncle three days ago. The past progressive can also be used to refer to a past action that happened over a range of time. It's also viewed as an ongoing situation. So, for example, I was studying, I was studying in the library all day yesterday. So not for a one action, but for an extended action over the day, all day yesterday. I was studying in the library. However, it is useful to mention that the simple past can also be used without really changing the meaning, actually. For example, I studied in the library all day yesterday. I was studying in the library all day yesterday. I studied in it all day yesterday. It doesn't really change the meaning. It still implies the same thing. So you can choose either. In some situations, you may have to choose between one or the other, but generally, both are fine. Moving on from here to our next form of the past tense, the past perfect, also sometimes called the pluperfect. Don't worry about that. This is used when referring to an event that took place before the time frame being talked about. We do have a little asterisk here, so let's find out what the information we are talking about down at the bottom. So in terms of time frames, the time frame may be referred to specifically as a stated time, like 9 p.m., a very specific time, or the time of another past action, when they arrived. So when they arrived as an action in the past. So that can also be our time frame. So how do we make the past perfect? We combine had, so that's the past tense of the auxiliary verb to have, I had, you had, they had, and so on, with the past participle of the main verb. Pretty simple. For example, we had 
finished the meal by 9 p.m. So we had, past tense of have, finished, past participle of the verb to finish, we had finished, and our time frame as well by 9 p.m. So at 9 p.m., we were no longer eating. That thing has been finished, has finished. Yeah, we had finished the meal. The other one, we had already left when they arrived. In this case, like I mentioned before, the time frame is not a specific time, but another past action, the action of these people arriving in the past. So when they arrived, we weren't there. We had already left. We were no longer there. We had already left when they arrived. Now let's compare two sentences. So the sentence, we had left when they arrived, compare that with the sentence, we left when they arrived. The first sentence implies that we had gone before they arrived. Like we mentioned earlier, this form of the past tense is used to refer to an action that took place before the time that we're saying, in this case, the time when they arrived. Now, the second sentence says that we left at the same time that they arrived. We left when they arrived. We did this thing when they did this thing. So only by using the past perfect can we imply that that thing happened before the time we're talking about. It might sound complicated, but when you get used to it, it's not too complicated. You will understand why we use it. Let's take a look at the next form of the past tense. It's the past perfect progressive. PPP, past perfect progressive, also sometimes called the past perfect continuous. You can use either. Now this refers to a continuous action that was completed at some point in the past. So it was continuous and then it finished, it was completed. How do we make this? We form it with had and been, so past tense of have and to be, had with been, and then the present participle of the main verb. It will have an ing ending, running, working, walking, staying, that kind of thing. Let's take a look at uh, all of these example sentences. Let's start at the top. I had been working in the office all day. So all day long, I was in the office working, but we can now presume that the action is completed or was completed in the past because we're using this form, the past perfect progressive. I had been working in the office all day. I was tired because I had been running. So at the time that I was tired, we can imagine that the running was completed. And that's why I was tired, because I had been running and now I was done. The action was completed. By yesterday morning, they had already been working for 12 hours. So by the time we're talking about, in this case, yesterday morning, at some point in the past, they had been working for 12 hours. That 12 hours of work is completed. They, could, they might still be working, but that period of 12 hours, at least that's completed. And that's why we're using the past perfect progressive. The last one sounds like a news report in a newspaper. Among the guests was John Smith, who had been staying at the hotel since July 10th. So he had been staying there. He's not there now, he was there in the past, and his staying, his stay there was completed. Again, uh, a couple of comparison sentences to think about. Compare this one, I had been working on my presentation when she came in. I had been working on it when she came in. Uh, with this sentence, I was working on my presentation when she came in. The first sentence, which uses the past, perfect progressive, implies that I stopped working when she came in. I had been working when she came in, I stopped working. The action was completed because she came in. The second sentence doesn't imply that so much. It uses the past progressive. I was working on it when she came in. So I might have kept working. We don't know, it doesn't imply that I stopped. 
using the past perfect progressive does imply that we stop. So those are the different forms of the past tense. It might seem a bit tricky, but actually once you understand why they're used, which situations they're used for, it becomes relatively easy to choose the right one. And then the only thing you've got to remember is how to form it, which verbs and verb endings to use. So before we do finish, there are of course some uses of the past tense and past tense verbs, which perhaps confusingly, don't actually refer to the past tense. They're actually used to refer to the present tense, like I was hoping to talk to you, which means I want to talk to you now in the present. I wanted to ask you something, which again means I want to ask you that thing now. And I wish you were here, which means it would be nice to have you here right now, but you're not. So these are used in the context of the present tense, and we will take a closer look at these things in my next grammar workshop, the present tense. As I mentioned, I'll do three, past tense now, present tense later, future tense after that. All it leaves for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you taking your time to listen today and hopefully learn some useful things. Do practice with the past tense. Do take a look at these slides. Remind yourselves of the different forms. And good luck with it. Don't worry too much. Just take your time learning it. Until next time, I'll say thanks again. Take care. And I'll hopefully see you all soon, especially at the next workshop. Thanks and goodbye. See you guys.